I would like to invite one of our sponsors, Dr. Ramon Talaj with Somos Community Care to say a few words. Good morning. Thank you, Cheryl. It's an honor to be standing here on this stage following Commissioner McDonald and Commissioner Bassan, who lead this work at the city state level and are my colleagues, my partners. For me, this is such a historic moment. After many years of being outsider, literally standing outside these rooms, where discussions like this take place. Today, I would like to address the pressing issue of healthcare accessibility to people who have never gotten the fundamental right to healthcare that should exist in this country, a reality that can no longer be ignored. These are the people who have no voices. They are invisible. That's the way we call it. But they also represent disparities and are the face of inequity. You see, my journey as a healthcare activist began as an immigrant to this country. Despite being a doctor and having served as under Minister of Health in the Dominican Republic almost 40 years ago, I'm 68 today, I found myself starting over again. I began working in some of the most underserved communities, Sefat, in a charity hospital for people who at that time wouldn't even be touched because they had AIDS. Do you remember how impossible it seemed at that time to think about a cure, to find an answer? That experience truly taught me that in our greatest moments of challenge, unity and change can be achieved. But he also taught me that in our healthcare system, there are always the haves and the have not. For all the money spent in healthcare in the richest country in the world, I believe our system is still somewhat broken. And you just saw two of my colleagues talking about that. So I wanted to come here and tell you that it can be fixed. Every day at Somos, we are proving that access, affordability, quality, and innovation are possible. We started a movement toward advanced value-based care. What is that? It means we take on financial risk while focusing on quality of care. We accomplish this by organizing our community doctors outside hospital setting for the last 20 years. We train our neighborhood workforce in care management. We meet in the people where they are. And acknowledging that lack of access and inequity is reality, exists. As almost we were at the intersection of clinical and social needs. And I'm proud to say that the facts speak for themselves. Here are a few examples. This is during the district. Just in one year, we say 300 million for those watchdogs out there who doesn't know what we do. One or three innovation design, we are the only one still standing. We reduce preventive readmission. Of the, 12, of the 225 possible pilots, only 12 were done. We got six of them. The rest of the money was used and no use. Reduce potential for rate emission by 20.4%. Get okay, the next one. Well, COVID hit. This read ended. And I met with my fiduciary, Montefiore Hobbit, and I said, we must keep the money being used in the community. It's not going to be given to anybody. And we used at that time close to $40 million during the pandemic. When nobody was prepared, our computer system work, our phones, our system to get referrals, to take a test, to get results. When the city was kneeling, we were working. And you could see vaccine, meals, social determinant of health. Nobody thought that. The sanitary crisis brought the worst humanitarian crisis. Millions of people in line to get a meal because they had no jobs. 
when people were in trucks because they were dead and they were undocumented, were sticking to get money to cremate. At that time, it was no funerals, people. We were the one who did that at that time. And get the next one. Well, now we became innovators. We take full risk. The only, still working. And we, working, paying attention to the social determinant of health, we did all of this. All of these numbers are real. It's happening now. It's important to say that the money that we invest, our own earned money during the district, we decide to put it on and does work. Today, some of the standards and New York only acting innovator where advanced provider organization enter full risk with fully delegated agreements with health insurance plans. Thanks. To the innovator program, we are pioneering a new model of high quality, preventive care and wellness delivered in a cultural competent manner. Somos, we are, that's what I mean, over 3,000 minority providers working with the community, serving over 1 million persons in New York City. But certainly we cannot do alone. We didn't do it alone. And I want to say here thanks to former President Barack Obama, to his landmark, to signing the Affordable Care Act, to our current president, and the Secretary of State, Joe Biden, and the Secretary of State, Javier Becerra, who came to our neighborhood to get the vaccine and talk about Announce the first 1 800 number for this most important the mental health situation that we have in the country. Senator Gustavo Rivera, who stood with us in the trench during the pandemic, and especially Governor Kathy Hochul, the governor of the state of New York. They had the courage, courage to join us transforming healthcare delivery system, and an institution like us, like our, had the right to have funds to continue doing their work for the preventive care the same way the institution had the resources to do for people who are already sick, who have chronic diseases, for those buildings that we have. Our new model in many ways is a return to common sense medicine, just to put the people first. We know today that when you treat the whole person, not just for a fee, but considering who they are, what language they speak, where they come from, their identity, the state of their mental health, whether they have food to eat or not, whether they have, can get themselves to the doctor or not, the outcomes by far will be better. You can call it what you want, social determinant of health, social care, her related social needs, or anything else, since everybody wants to take credit for some word that start, nobody want to talk about long ago. We had to see the pandemic to start talking about that. Now imagine an army of 3,000 providers with about 30,000 community health workers joining forces with community-based organizations, working on the care of millions of people across the city of New York, in every borough, in every building. That is Somos. We understand that the foundation for any meaningful health care reform has to, start, has to start at the grassroots level and work for the bottom up. Hopefully what you hear here is normally from the bottom down. Disease is more important than prevention. And when someone is putting this in prevention, the people who get all the money from disease start screaming and actually trying to discredit what we do. I want to let you know about Jose. You gave me an example about Jose. This is very important. Jose, you could read this. It's a 35 year old, system abuse, diabetes, released from prison. His current sister is a children. He lived with a, his sister with his children in a small Manhattan apartment. He got diabetes mellito. The current state is this. If we live it the way it is, he will be homelessness, continue social use diseases, Unemployed, re incident to penal system, food insecurity, isolation, 
Obviously, we aim in the ER, most likely in the ICU. For sure, he will lose a limb or the eyes, perhaps ended in dialysis. With amputations and other damages. As you can see, this patient could have ended costing millions of dollars to the healthcare system. And you know what? Without a doubt, in the United States, we have the best hospitals, providing the best disease care of the world, especially in New York. But clearly, if we implement this integrated model of quality care, we could avoid this complication and achieve better outcomes for him, his family, increasing the well-being of the whole community, the city, and the state of New York, and the whole country. This model should be improved everywhere. A sample like this brings all of us to this moment, where as a society, we have tremendous opportunity to improve the lives of all people, one person at a time, without spending millions for the stroke. And we go to dialysis every three days. Before I end my speech, I would like to take a moment of silence in honor of our fallen heroes. Twelve of our Somos Network doctors who continue to work during the pandemic and lost their lives. And one in particular, most recent, Somi Franco, a friend, from World Central Kitchen. She stood with us feeding people during the pandemic who understood that people cannot be healthy if they don't eat. She lost her life in Gaza over this principle. I want to wait 20 seconds of silence. So I'm going to make a pledge to you in this room and to the people of New York. That in some months we will continue work to treat healthcare as a right for all the people. To focus on the most vulnerable. To keep speaking the truth to power. Until the day when everyone in New York has access to affordable, accessible, and high quality healthcare that every American deserves, no matter where they're from, the color of the skin, or anything else. I will say what the Declaration of Independence said. All men are created equal. That they are endowed by their creator with uncertain, unalienable rights. That among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. <laughs> and to, to end this, I want to ask the staff who see here that I invite, who were with me during this many years, especially during the pandemic, would you please stand up one second? These are heroes on flesh. You could stand. I want especially to recognize Dr. Chen and Henry Chen and Henry Munoz. Where's Henry? Stand up. You know? Yes. Because, because what we do, we've been under attack. Because I'm telling you right now, you have done in the right moment for the city of New York what they deserve. And you have been able to kneel the city and we stand up where we are again. The last piece that I want to show is because we're going to the Vatican this May 25th, where the Pope is going to announce with all the religious groups, with more than a thousand physicians, primary care, that the most important unit in healthcare is the patient and the family doctor that we tend to lose because healthcare starts here, not in the building. Thank you. <laughs>